the Reds should rebuild, or should they? We're going to break down what that all means and tell you why Rob Manfred swung and missed again. That's all on today's Locked on Reds podcast. You are Locked on Reds, your daily Cincinnati Reds podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making the Locked On Reds podcast your hashtag first listen of the day. We are free and available on all platforms where you get your podcast. I'm Stephen Offenbaker alongside Jeff Carr. We are your co-hosts that have taken our love for the Cincinnati Reds and turned that into information for you. On today's podcast, we are going to weigh the pros and cons of the Reds doing a rebuild versus going for it or maybe even just standing pat. And Jeff, this is a pretty complicated question i could see this going many different ways and if if we're going to be a pro rebuild then don't we have to start the conversation with the trading of number one number two and number three in the reds rotation i think you have to steve especially when you're looking at the fact that if and when i say rebuild i'm not necessarily talking about what happened there at the end of the 2010s i'm not talking about a five six year rebuild i'm looking at a short rebuild in fact talking maybe two years got a tweet from a listener uh, at the locked on reds account it was from crazy at reds and wildcats he was talking about how there are bad contracts that are coming off the books in 2024 and maybe why that should be uh kind of the the aim for the reds if they're going to try the r word i hate the r word i know that you hate the r word i know that anybody i, I don't oh, know man who, like, i hate who the likes r word who likes those? I mean, but well, especially since the Reds have never done one right. No, still to this day, never have. And that includes present company. There's past company. All company doesn't exclude anybody. So when you look at this, you have to go big. If you're looking at a two year time frame, you're talking about Tyler Malley. You're talking about Luis Castillo, not just Sonny Gray, not just even Mike Mostakis, if they were to somehow un unload that contract you're talking about all these guys because they would be tantalizing trade offers i would think i mean those guys would get a prospect a big time dude who's ready to go in two years well absolutely and and you just hit on a great point that that drives me crazy whenever i try to talk about a rebuild with with anyone and it's well you know what they got to do is trade joey Votto and they got to trade mike moustakis and 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 that eugenio help, and suarez <laughs> and like okay Fine, but first of all, just because your desire to trade the guy is there doesn't mean there's anybody that's going to take him. And I think if if we're talking about a pro rebuild, if we're talking about uh, being in support of of short, as you mentioned, rebuild with this team, it has to be realistic. And it, and it can't be, we're going to trade Moose for three prospects that get us into the <laughs> World Series because it's not happening. If you want to gain talent, you're going to have to give talent. And, and I think yeah. that's why you start with the top of the rotation. And that's a very Yankees fan mentality, right? Trade that broken seat from left field and get Luis Castillo. I think we all uh, experienced that the last offseason. We the lived it. Yeah, the fake reports of Luis Castillo becoming a Yankee uh, were being circulated around the social media spheres. The thing about this also, this short rebuild, it almost lines up with the messaging that they're telling us. I hate the messaging of realigning payroll because that was a great thing I saw. Somebody had like a like a checklist of Cincinnati sports and how the, the Cincinnati Bearcats were in the college football playoff and went undefeated and won their conference. And the Cincinnati Bengals had won their division and they look awesome for the future. And the Reds are aligning payroll to their resources. Like, yeah, baseball is going to be so much fun, but they're giving us that message because they're uh, that's saying you're not going to spend money on free agents. And that kind of fits in with this whole idea of a two year rebuild. And that's the thing too. I almost want to incept this mind. I just hit my mic. I want to incept this mind frame and this thought process into Nick crawl and Bob Castellini and Phil Castellini and everybody making decisions is that, okay, if you're using the R word, this team's got the core and it's got the talent to build around that you don't have to make it a long-term one. It could be done in two years. 
No, sure. And and if they do make it longer than two years, then they 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 miss their their window. They miss their chance yeah. to shoot their shot because you know we talked about this yesterday, not yesterday, but on the last episode, we talked about the the young core that's in place with Tyler Stevenson and with Jonathan India, and and we hinted at what things might look like if Hunter Green and Nick Lodolo are in this rotation. And the one I guess positive for me, if they do in fact trade Sonny Gray and Luis Castillo and Tyler Malley. And it's gotta be those guys, Jeff, because if, if, if Sonny Gray is out of here, yeah, for the value, but for also for the fact that he's gone at the end of the year, like they're not going to extend him. Uh, if you talk about this two year window, when that window is over for the rebuild, Luis Castillo will be out of here. They're not going to extend him. And the same holds true for Tyler Malley. So by trading those guys, you get, major league prospects that are probably a year or two away from being ready. And then you free up rotation spots. I mean, the reds could realistically, if they were to do this, have an opening day rotation heading into the 2022 season that looks something like Hunter green, Nick Lodolo, Vladimir Gutierrez, Tony. And that's the important thing. It's gotta be those two guys. I I don't want to hear about like, yeah, they got a season in triple eight. No, 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 no. They're in the major leagues day one. If you're doing this idea. I mean, that's five near rookies because also at the back end of that, you could have Sam Martin. So, I mean, you've got those five guys that are young. They're not exactly going to be innings eaters, but they're around. Now, wait a minute. I, I, I didn't hear like any Scott Feldman's in there or um what about Tim Adelman? Can can Tim Adelman be on there? Um, <laughs> maybe our maybe our boy Dan Asher Straley. Will, Dan, Dan Straley will come back and we'll flip him for another prospect. It'll be great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, that's the key here is that if you are doing a short term rebuild, which the Reds, I firmly believe it, are in a good position to do. And I, I appreciate Crazy for making the point that with these bad contracts coming off the books in two years, and not only that, but that's something that we haven't kind of touched on yet and something that we could build a lot more content around and we will later on this off season, but 2023 and 2024, you've got some real interesting guys that are due to come up at that point. Like we're talking about the Tyler Callahan's and the Reese Hines and the Matt McLean's and guys like that should be ready to come up. And there's a lot of people that love Matt McLean and we'll probably talk more about him with uh, our friend Doug Gray and a couple other prospect guys as we go along this off season. But the point of this is it's not something we're not talking about 20, 2014 through 2019 through 2020, like what we just experienced. It can be done in two years. Hey, I, I just, I don't know. You know, I, I you know what, Jeff? Know I mean, I am, I am so anti-rebuild but just just this little bit of conversation it, it kind of makes sense if 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 the castellinis are as committed to not spending money as we think they are and i think they are and i know you think they are i just i don't believe that there's anything behind some of this mindset of well we'll trade this one guy to free up that money to spend it on these other two guys that's not what they're doing that money is going straight into someone's private jet fund. That money is not getting reallocated for players. So if that's really what we think, then maybe this is the right option for the Reds to, to take this, this little window of a rebuild while not being the Orioles. They'll still be competitive with yeah. the core that they have in place. Uh, who knows what Major League Baseball's playoffs even look like heading into next year. Uh, a 500 team may be a playoff team. Uh, which is, you know, makes Castellini salivate because you make the playoffs every year and not spend any money. But I mean, I mean, Jeff, you and I talk about this all the time. I mean, there's, there's a way that you can have it both ways in this scenario, I think. Yeah. And, and I tell you the interesting thought about the idea of a rebuild is the converse and standing pat. We're not necessarily talking about going for it, being all out. The Reds have said they're not going to do that. We're, we're talking about the two options here of do they do like a short-term rebuild, trade off their top three pitchers, and maybe a couple of other different guys who could bring in some key prospects who could come up in the next two years, or do they stand pat with what they have, maybe maybe add like one major league contract, if that. But the idea of standing pat and how good they are right now and those two options, it's it's interesting because I don't necessarily know that I'm leaning one way, but I'm with you. Like talking about it in this way, the short-term rebuild actually doesn't sound as grotesque and horrifying as you might initially think it does. 
And, 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 and you're right. And we should probably spend some time looking at the other side of this coin and, and seeing uh, if it does make sense to stand pat and, and, and make a run with what you got. But before we do that, uh, it's a new year, Jeff. And, you know, that means New Year's resolutions. I know that one of your New Year's resolutions uh, was to, to get in a little bit better shape. Same like me, you and I have both talked about hitting the gym. And one of the things that goes along with that is eating healthier. And if you include Built Bar in that plan to eat healthier, you're going to uh, have a great nutritious snack and it's going to feel like you're still eating your daily dose of candy bar, but it's healthy for you. Uh, Built Bars are made with real ingredients. They're not fake and processed. They contain real chocolate. Uh, they are covered completely in real chocolate, as a matter of fact. And if you look at their stats, you know, this is a baseball podcast. We're a big fan of stats around here. Uh, Built Bars are 130 calories, four grams of sugar, four grams, uh, net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. So this is just something that you can eat and you're going to feel good. You're going to feel like you're not denying yourself uh, the little treats in life. And they have great flavors. They have cherry barcia, which is my personal favorite. My locker at work is stuffed full of those puppies. Uh, coconut brownie chunk, salted caramel. The list goes on and on. Over the holidays, I ordered an eggnog built bar that uh, was very, very good. Uh, if all this sounds good for you, if you're trying to fulfill your New Year's resolutions as well, head over to built.com. Use the promo code LOCKED15. That's going to give you 15% off your purchases. Again, built.com. Use the promo code lock 15 for 15% off your order. So let's head into uh, talking about the other side of this coin. Uh, it's going to be a very interesting conversation, I think. And we've got a lot of interesting conversations coming up this week, Jeff. Uh, tomorrow, as a matter of fact, we're going to be talking with Justin Rock. He's the play-by-play -play yes. voice of the Daytona Tortugas. A great source of information. He's got great stories. A really fun guy to talk to. I'm actually really looking forward to this. I think maybe he'll come in and be able to talk a little Eli De La Cruz with us and pretty much all things Tortugas. Yeah, I'm looking forward to having Justin on. We got the chance to talk this past season, and it was a lot of fun. We talked a lot about at, at that point because even uh, then, Ellie De La Cruz wasn't that well known, and now he's like a top five prospect, which I love, and that's really what we want to get into. But we also talked about a lot about Daniel Veohin, who is a really good hitting catcher down there in uh, Low A. I think he might even start the year in Dayton, uh, which, by the way, coming up next week, we will have. Uh, our our good man from the Dayton Dragons on here, Tom Nichols, to talk about the Dayton Dragons. So we're kind of going through the minor leagues here. We're, we're starting with Justin. It's going to be a lot of fun. You're not going to miss that tomorrow. But yeah, let's get back to talking about the Reds and talking about what we're. We mentioned the idea of a short rebuild, but the converse of that is standing pat. The converse of that is not going all in and spending tons of money. Look, you agree i agree we all agree we want the reds to spend money to win but they have told us we're not going to do that this is like when you were a kid and you're at toys r us and you're like i want all the transformers and your mom and dad were like we're not going to buy you all the transformers it just it doesn't happen you got to figure out a way to make things work and the two ways that this is going to happen is either a short-term rebuild or the reds stand pat and there is some merit to this because i believe that the Reds, we, we talked about this with a short-term rebuild, and the reason that it should be short is they've got a pretty solid core. I mean, you're talking about some really talented rookies here, and there's guys who could bounce back. I know that that involves the H word there, but uh, there's some hope, talent. Hope is our strategy. I love it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. No, and you know what, Jeff? I think the biggest question here for this part of the conversation we don't have the answer to, and I would really love to know the answer to this question. And it is, are we done cutting the payroll? Because if what we have right now is what we roll into opening day with, that's a team that can compete. You're absolutely right. Uh, I need to know how much more aligning of the payroll we have to do with the resources and so on and so forth. Because if we're done and we can keep Sonny Gray for this year, if we can keep Luis Castillo, if we can keep Tyler Malley, 
Uh, and then those mythical bounce backs occur with Eugenio Suarez and Mike Moustakis. I know that's who you're talking about. Um, yeah. This team could win the division. I mean, it's 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 mind boggling because and Nick Senzel they could, too. And Nick Senzel, you're absolutely right. Yeah. They could win the division. And I just, I mean, I swear, I feel like that makes both me and you Castellini apologists trying to say that <laughs> you know he can do all of these things and they can still win the division. Oh, because God. listen, I am not apologizing for for that. I am not being an apologist, so, but I don't know. So- so wait, are, 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 are we painting a target on our backs by saying that we believe the Reds could stand pat? I, I probably, I mean, we're going to draw the ire and the wrath of a certain uh, oh, man. that's out there, but well, and, and I think the interesting thing is that these guys have talent and there's a reason that Nick Senzel was a high draft pick. And now the interesting part about him is can you bounce back? I mean, let's be honest. What Nick Senzel has shown us has been spurts at best. So bounce back means that he's been there i don't know has nick senzel been there i don't think he's been he so it's different right i mean we talk about bounce back mike moustakis we've seen what he's capable of and he's done it at a high level on multiple occasions he's given us a sample that says this is something that he could do can he still do it is age a factor the injuries wear you down i don't know same with gino i i told you this bunch of times and i think even on episode you don't hit 50 home runs by accident you know you don't get 48 49 50 as a mistake in major league baseball it's too hard filled with too many great players so there's something to be said there so are we are we castellini apologists or are we just playing hypocrites where we as fans are like yes hope is fine but then when we look at the team we're like no hope is not fine no i don't know i don't think we're hypocrites i think every fan is allowed to be hopeful because it's not as if we have control of the team, which I have heard plenty of arguments as to how we could make that a thing. But I just think that when you're looking at this team, there's hope from our standpoint, but, well, that and there's neither, some guys and, who could bounce back. Yeah. And neither one of us are saying this is what we really want to have happen. I mean, I think it's just realism, right? You know, yeah. there's two options here. There really are only two options because the third option, which is Castellini wakes up and, thinks he's an owner of the Texas Rangers and goes out and spends $500 million in like 15 minutes. Uh, Uh That ain't, that ain't happening. So these are really the only two realistic options to, to, to be on. And, and after that conversation in the first segment about a mini rebuild, um, that makes sense to me, but also if we're done cutting standing pat makes sense to me. And yeah. I think some of that may depend on what the rest of the division does whenever we have the continuation of the off season. But it's- I think you're more likely Steve to get a knock at the door and somebody hands you a bottle of Pappy Van Winkle than for Bob Gasolini to wake up and start spending money on players. Uh, I think also I'm not sure. I'm not sure which one of those things I want more. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell you this, though. There's something else, and I feel like this is probably a terrible reason to base any sort of roster decision on, but I don't care. I think it should be a factor. They can't do this to Joey Votto. They can't tell him that they're going to wait for him to exit the team to then be relevant. They're going to tell this man that has given his entire professional career to them. And yes, I know part of that is they gave him an, a, a just crazy contract that, I mean, he's, he'd be silly not to accept. So obviously he signed that and he has been a very loyal red the entire time. He's been a very loyal player, very good player, his entire career, even through those kind of dips and the, and you know, the whole decline phase there in 2019 and 2020, but still, we're talking about a dude who his entire career has pretty much been made a scapegoat as to why they've not competed. And now we're going to just, you know, uh, is it, what is it? My favorite villain always says, you know, the circle is now complete. That's what it is. Yes. The circle is now complete. And we are officially just going to say, well, until he's off the team, we're not going to compete. I, I think that that would just be, absolutely outrageous and a terrible thing to say to a dude who deserves playoff success. 
Oh, I think we all want Joey to get his Freddie Freeman moment, right? I mean, yes. I think I think that's what we all want to see. But I mean, we all want the World Series and we all want the championship. But if if you follow this team for any amount of time at all, I mean, you're going to be like me. If if they go to the World Series and the final out is coming, you know, we're not watching for the overall big celebration. We're not watching for everybody dogpiling on the pitcher's mound. We're watching Joey. We're watching Joey tuck that ball into his back pocket and cry that single Canadian in tier to celebrate his finally getting a ring i mean i think that's what we would all be looking at right i'd hope that instead of like i mean i'm sure they'll have champagne in the locker room but i would hope they'd have some molsons or something like that although i can't remember what he said he prefers it's either molsons or it's labats I, I you know obviously those are the only two i can think of i'm pretty sure there's more than two canadian beers but Whatever. I'm sure somebody will tell us in the comment section. Uh, <laughs> the last thing that I'm thinking of here. And they'll be very polite about it. Yes, they will. Yes, they will. Uh, the, the other thing that I'm thinking about here, and this one isn't necessarily a reason to rebuild. It is kind of follows with the realism that we're talking about here, Steve. And that is, this is pretty much what the Reds do, right? They plan for the best. You always hear the saying in life when it comes to anything plan for the worst hope for the best the reds plan for the worst or they plan for the best and when the worst happens they just scramble they lose their minds <laughs> they plan for the best though. they don't plan for the worst that's a great little noise you just made right there <laughs> <laughs> something between a turkey i was thinking of that scene and yeah, was that night. a gobble that was like yeah the- <laughs> i was thinking of that scene in the dark night whenever the joker is just like everybody loses their minds <laughs> And then that's either Mickey Mouse or a turkey. I don't know <laughs> if any of those are better. Um, well, I'm sorry. We just jumped off the rails. Lost that <laughs> one. Yeah, something. Yeah. All right. I, I got to get it. <laughs> Whatever. We're getting back on the rails here. Coming up. <laughs> yeah. Coming up, man. All right. Let's get off the rails here. Get back on the rails here. We're off the rails. Coming up. Rob Manfred. Hashtag Manfred hates baseball. Tried to be strategic but it didn't work and if you want to be strategic with your sports knowledge i know the place head on over to betonline.ag betonline would like to wish you a happy new betting year as we continue our march to the playoffs and beyond Bet online remains the number one spot for all the best sports wagering action for 2022 and it's the only online sports book that I trust new year and a new updated desktop and mobile website to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code locked on to get started. Again, that's 50% more on your welcome. That's getting your bankroll started in the right direction before you even make your first wager from football, basketball, hockey, boxing, and UFC, right to your favorite Vegas, favorite Vegas casino games. And you got to check out some baseball futures too. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for this year. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports. Head on over to betonline.ag, set up your profile with the promo code locked on, get that 50% welcome bonus at Bet Online, where the game starts. Thanks again for making Locked On Reds your hashtag first listen of the day. Make sure that you are following the podcast on all platforms and steve rob manford hates baseball i think that that's pretty much just i i I think it's a foregone conclusion at this point we're not even talking about something that people don't understand anymore it's obvious and he did this thing the other day where he thought he was being sneaky in fact like you know i've been rolling through rebels again i love rebels by the way clone wars rebels i i love it and i got to the point wherever you know darth vader gets the lothal and he's trying to get everybody to clamp down and just be super mean to all the people i think rob manfred thinks he's darth vader with this move and trying to get rid of ken rosenthal but You're i think he failed he did fail and and you know i i as an early adopter of the manfred hates baseball hashtag uh 
you know, I've been using that on Twitter for a long time now. And if you're not following, I think Jeff you were the Twitter, harbinger in red. I, I, I was right there at the very beginning, you know, and if you're not following us on Twitter, please do so. You can follow Jeff over at Jeff Carr. That's Jeff with three F's because he is spelling challenged. And you can follow me at S Offenbaker. Uh, that's just the way it sounds. You can also follow the podcast at Locked on Reds. But over there, I've been kind of banging away at this for a long time. And it took me it took me a minute to really figure out. Uh, what it is that that Manfred is doing. And I think it's because I come from basically the last generation that had a commissioner whose mission statement was to protect the game of baseball. And when Bud Selig became the commissioner of baseball, that that marching order changed. It was no longer to be the protector of baseball. It was to be the mouthpiece of the owners because he was one of the owners. And, and, yeah. and that's where we're at. So now for him to draw criticism from baseball's probably current most trusted national source of information uh, simply because he was a little bit critical on the league owned network they rolled him they absolutely yep. just hatchet jobbed him and it's it's and 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 you're i know you're going to make this point and i'm going to turn you loose on it because what you were saying off air about them empowering rosenthal i agree with you 100 percent uh, i think you should go through that again it's a complete empowerment i mean ken rosenthal really th thought he or Ken Rosenthal getting let go by MLB network by Rob Manfred. It was like Rob Manfred was saying, get off my porch, get out, get out of here. But what he didn't realize was Ken Rosenthal still has a seat to his table on his back patio because he still works for the athletic. He still has dugout access through Fox sports and he will be working with the Fox sports broadcasts on this. In fact, I saw, he just posted an article the other day about, I believe it was like trade targets or something like that, but kudos to Ken Rosenthal. I mean, he has taken this in stride and part of it was probably like, you know, this is conditions of your employment with the athletic and stuff. Don't go crazy about this, but he understands he has unfettered access throughout the league. Still. It's not as if Rob Manfred has told every team to stop talking to Ken Rosenthal. Cause I don't think that that's allowed. Well, it's funny that you mentioned that because this has been a problem in baseball at the team level yeah. across both leagues, across all teams. Every team has a gatekeeper. Every team has a person that is in charge of controlling access. And I'm, I'm not here to drop any names, but I know at multiple teams, multiple media members that have been cautioned about exactly how far they're willing to are able to go in their criticisms because their access is threatened. And if you are a beat writer, if you are a television guy, if you are a radio person and they take away your access, you can't do your job. So I don't know that, I, I don't know that, that Rosenthal is as safe as you say he is with his access. If, uh, if major league baseball starts feeling a little froggy and tries to follow that, that same true. pattern. That is true. I just, I, and on that point, there's, this is just a quick point on that side note is that I think it's weird because it's baseball. We are talking about baseball. Why on earth are there such huge barriers that have been put up to access and, and things like that? I get it. All right. In, in some circles, I understand it. You're not trying to give every uh, dude in a basement with a Twitter account access to your team. I understand that. But on the flip side, you've got teams like the Bengals who this past season invited podcasters invited bloggers invited pretty much anybody who has a semi sizable voice about the team invited them down to the team facilities and kind of had a day had like a media had them with their media day it was very impressive to hear about what they did there that's not happening with the reds that's not happening with a lot of different teams around major league baseball and i feel like that's something I, and obviously this is like you know coming from the choir it's not anything that's gonna you know we're preaching to the choir here um, but I, I wish that that was something that the Reds allowed more access to the folks like me and you and some other great bloggers and, and podcasters and stuff like that out there. I, I just don't understand that. But with this whole Ken Rosenthal thing, bringing it back, Rob Manfred was trying to flex. I think it's very obvious. 
in at a time when they are legally not allowed to talk about baseball because of the lockout for some reason. That's still not been explained by anybody, but whatever. There's not allowed to be pictures on the team sites or any sites. Um, if you're affiliated with Major League Baseball in some way, you're not allowed to use those uh, team pictures. The Red Sox Stove League isn't allowed to talk about anybody currently on the 40-man roster. Um, all this other stuff. Rob Manfred tries to go a step further and cuts out one of the main voices for his sport. Like, what are we doing? It's a desperate, desperate attempt to control the narrative through a process that they know with each passing hour is getting away from them. I really believe that that's what it is. They, they, the every day that passes and the report is the team's, the the owners and the players have not spoken about the lockout every day that that happens it's a little bit bigger problem for major league baseball and their owners that's all we keep hearing too and like i want to be like hey let's give you guys a, a a mlb lockout update but honestly if i did that i would need to upload a sound effect on one of these buttons here on my on my uh my soundboard and hit it and just be crickets because all we hear, and this, there are articles that are being written by people who cover baseball because, let's be honest, they want to cover this lockout, and there's nothing to cover because nothing is happening. And, and I feel like we are getting to the point where whatever happens with the new CBA, whatever comes of this lockout is just cleaning up a pig. And I don't know that we can switch the pig out for anything else right now because that'd be like trying to restructure, like putting a new foundation into a house that's already been built. I agree completely. And it's frustrating. And I don't know that there's uh, any hope. We keep using that word. I don't know that there's any hope that anything's going to happen get, soon. I, I don't get me wrong. I love baseball. I love the sport of baseball. It's still my favorite sport. And I understand that I got Bengals on here and I pointed to the wrong side of my shirt. I mean, I got Bengals on here and I love football, but baseball is my number one sport always has been. The Reds have always been my number one favorite team, but you can love baseball and not like the entity that runs it. And right now the entity that runs it has not really lent itself to a whole lot of liking. Anyway. That's going to do Jeff, it for us. Yeah, I was going to say, I think that's probably a point where we just go ahead and wrap it up for the day. Uh, on that uh, bomb. So, so the, that'll wrap up this edition of Locked on Reds. Coming up on the next podcast, you know, as we mentioned uh, earlier, we are going to be talking with uh, the voice of the Daytuna. The Daytuna. We're going to be talking with the voice. Good grief, Jeff. What is going on? We are going to be talking with the voice of the Daytona Tortugas. And uh, that's going to be Justin Rock. He's been on this program before. Jeff has said so many amazing things about him. He's going to join the show, talk to us a little bit about De La Cruz. He's going to talk to us about all things going on with the Tortugas. It's going to be a great episode. You're going to definitely want to check it out. So if you have not clicked that subscribe button for whatever medium you're using to listen to me right now, head over and do that. Uh, uh, Jeff, before they get out of here, uh, tell me a little bit about Locked on Bets. Locked on bets is hosted by your boy Q and Lee Sterling there, Stephen. And no, when you listen to them, they are going to give you the info you need to make some cash over at betonline.ag. Locked on bets is just like locked on reds. They are free and available every single day on all platforms. Steve, it might be the off season and we might be locked out, but what are we? We are locked on reds every single day. <laughs>